Hi everyone, welcome to or back to the podcast. So today we're interviewing Hannah, who's also Nourished Girl on Instagram. She's one of my best friends, so today will be really fun. Hi guys. Yeah, Shelby said I go by Nourished Girl on all of my social platforms. I met Shelby two years ago. Yes. And our friendship has just blossomed since then. So it's cool to be here full circle because you mentioned to me two years ago that you wanted to start the pod. So I'm proud of you for doing this. You're definitely like one of the first people I wanted on the podcast. So today we're going to get into a little bit of Friends LA, how we met. We're going to have two parts to this interview with Hannah. So there's going to be part one and then the next week, or the week after we're going to release part two also talk about like mental health and different things like that i'm excited i'm excited so should we just talk about i guess how we met yeah let's start with you because you (laughs) i started it you started it (laughs) i manifested the friendship we should low-key pull up yeah you took a screenshot right yeah i sent it to you this is a sign before she says the story to just dm people because it doesn't have to be that deep it's not that scary it's not as someone who received the dm i didn't think it was weird that she reached out to me I thought it was cool. It is scary because you're like, wait, what if they just don't respond or something? But then they're not meant for you. Basically, I was in slow. I can't really remember the time frame. I was following just like health and wellness podcast or not podcast, health and wellness TikTokers. I found yours. Yours was really cute. You did like a lot of trend dances. It was cringy, Shelby. Okay, but at the time, that's what everybody was doing. Like I didn't think, I didn't follow you and be like, oh my God, these are so cringy. I literally did them too. We all have a past on social media. We're not always aesthetic. And they're still up there. Yeah, they're still up there. I haven't deleted them. Me neither. Go watch them. They're really uh, bad. They formed our personality. Yeah. Followed Hannah on TikTok. Then I wanted to figure out where you're from. She stalked me. I definitely (laughs) stalked you. Your Instagram that was connected to the TikTok was nourish girl was it always called nourish girl yeah then i found your regular instagram which no longer exists Mm -hmm. literally went through your tagged photos or something (laughs) to find out where you lived because like there's beach photos and i was like she obviously lives in so or i thought you lived in socal someone had a location of san diego oh my god (laughs) well okay so in our screenshots it says that you swiped up on my story yeah that's what i was confused about so i have a feeling that maybe i think you followed me and I, then i just like i definitely to... followed you and you followed me back mm-hmm. and then maybe i liked one of your like it doesn't show liked stories so maybe right. like i liked a story and then you swiped up on a story mm-hmm. or something i don't know what it said i don't know what i said i f- it probably was a picture of you and me so to be honest probably i got the courage to text you because i was like oh i'm going to san diego soon like that'd be so fun if we met up so i dm'd you i was like i think i love your tiktok i follow you on tiktok like mm-hmm. i'm going to san diego next week do you want to hang out <laughs> i had moved from i was in san diego for like nine months or something but i had moved home so she caught me a little too late in the dms you did say like oh my god i was just journaling do you yeah. remember this yeah because i was i was in a very lonely period of time I had just moved back home with my parents I just like didn't really have friends around me I don't know what I wrote specifically in my journal but I think I was trying to like attract new people into my life and then Shelby dm'd me and I showed my mom and I'm like mom what the heck this is so cool and I knew like you didn't live near me so like I didn't even think we would hang out to be yeah. honest but I just thought it was so cool that someone didn't think I was a total freak no what's funny was like I was in college surrounded by like a bunch of college kids and I'm like mm-hmm. going out into Instagram to try to find friends but I had friends but like I um, didn't I didn't have any friends <laughs> you were really sweet and then we just became like internet friends mm-hmm. from there for a long time obviously got each other's numbers at that point we would only text like sporadically I feel like yeah it was never consistent Mm-mm. but I would always only text you in class I so- kind of liked that though because like we were slowly starting to get to know each other mm-hmm. we would interact with each other on social media and like liking stories I bet doing that stuff mm-hmm. but so it I wasn't like super you know yeah, like, like I mean you can't right really away. make be best friends with someone right away and we on didn't the internet. know each other so yeah. it's like what are we doing so i feel like we did it like very seamlessly yeah it's not like you're not gonna spill your life to a stranger mm-hmm. just i mean text. i kind of like to do that yeah but. <laughs> <laughs> but it's easier if you're like seeing them for the first yeah. time you know again i don't think we hung out for like a good another like we didn't see each other for, like in a person. year for oh, a no. year no, maybe no, no. like six months yeah it was because- your first time out to la Mm-hmm. okay so maybe it was like a good eight months yeah which is a long time that is a long time for us but we weren't even texting that much I liked that we didn't text a lot either because there wasn't like a huge build-up 
it yeah. makes me think of when you're talking to a guy for a really long time and there's that buildup. so then when you like meet them in person for the first time it's like super weird mm-hmm. like I was of course so nervous to like meet you in person but it wasn't like I knew a ton of stuff about you like yeah. we had so much we to talk about so- we, we went to dinner it was perfect yeah we went to some I think it was a vegan restaurant yeah I think so yeah. I didn't even we didn't even eat our food yeah we you don't both need got to kale go salads. you really don't need to go to um a restaurant on like your first friend date because you're gonna have so much stuff to talk about yeah, you're not gonna like eat just dinner. go get coffee or something yes coffee and a walk is my go-to now yeah we talked for till closing yeah we talked for three hours that was insane like and we had so much in common we really did and I think it's a good especially if you are like in the health and wellness space or just like any space on social on social media having a common interest with someone don't worry that like it's going to be awkward because you're going to have so much to talk about and like already like you're meeting someone new so there's so much you can like I just it's not going to be awkward you just have to be genuinely curious about what they have Mm -hmm. to say yeah like we talk we didn't even talk that much about what we had in common it just sort of seamlessly happened like we talked a lot about like high school and like friends and obviously like social media and then wellness. you were still like in slow too so I thought that was really interesting to like see you do both kind yeah. of you're into health and wellness but you're also like in a sorority mm-hmm. and you're like going out and stuff I thought that was really cool yeah because I can't do both <laughs> but I'm learning and I mean it was like I genuinely didn't really know much about you like I didn't know you went to two colleges mm-hmm. or two different cities and then you moved home and then it was interesting to just learn about Tahoe and all mm-hmm. that from there we still like texted sporadically until you visited me I think Mm -hmm. because or did I visit you in LA first we met each other at dinner and then I didn't see you for a A year right and then I came here okay so you came here and then I visited you twice in LA since after I saw you here we're used to long distance which is crazy because I feel like I know you so well Mm mm-hmm But I think we've just done a really good job at communicating when we want. So it's not like forced. But I remember when I came here, I stayed with Shelby for like three nights or something. I was so nervous because I had only been to like dinner with you and yeah. like we talked and it was great but there was still like oh my god what if like you know we're gonna really see like if we Actually get along met. yeah and it was like, perfect what happens if we don't get along and then you're stuck with me for like two more days <laughs> yeah I know I'm like shoot I remember though we talked on the couch for like hours we just like talked about so much stuff and like I told you this today but Shelby says things that just I've never been able to like articulate hearing her like open up and be vulnerable to me is like so cool because we relate to each other so much more than I ever thought we could going from like dinner that one time like like I knew we would have common interests but not you know nearly this much yeah and I think when we first or when you stayed with me I have had so many friendships where I haven't opened up and I felt uncomfortable and because there wasn't this build-up of friendship when because we were new friends I was like I want to do this one different you always since the very beginning beginning have been so open and vulnerable with yourself like whether that's on social media or just with me it made me feel comfortable to like talk to you which I've literally I remember telling you on that couch like I've never really told any of my friends this and I really appreciate that because I feel like with friends like of course you don't need to like always get in like the heavy deep stuff but I just also never had that growing up I had a lot just like in me that I never felt like I could express to my friends it never felt like safe to kind of I just felt like they were going to judge me more if I ever like shared things so now that I've been in this phase the last few years of trying to make friends it's definitely been like top of my priority like I need to be like emotionally secure with them. Not that I have to dump all my stuff on them. It's nice to have support in that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really appreciated that when like we were able to just like open up. And like I didn't really even open up to you that much. I was just kind of like interested like what you had to say. Because I think like I was a little bit in like what we talked about further along. But you were still open to hearing me. Like you didn't like shut down the conversation because you yourself didn't want to talk about it yet. Completely, yeah. And I was like, okay. I wasn't trying to pry in any, any information out of you. Knowing that like you're not going to be judged by someone is like huge. Mm -hmm. because I feel like a lot of us especially like growing up probably a lot of us might have felt like judged by people and it's probably just like you're young and you're going through high school and stuff and it's weird and everyone's just like insecure I hate that feeling yeah I hate feeling like I'm judged by friends or like you shouldn't feel like why do you feel like that that's weird you know like I guess that it's being judged like like one of the best things I've learned is like kind of start small with someone like tell them you're sad and see mm-hmm. how they react and if they react badly then you know like they're not the type of person yeah like you can kind of like test it out to yeah. see and we probably did that like through text like 
we weren't always talking about like crazy stuff but it was like I could tell like you were gonna stick around and like especially after I left your house on that like trip I knew like okay we're friends like yeah we both like each other we both keep texting I will say too after we went to dinner that first time my biggest tip with that is to always send a follow-up text mm-hmm. because I had so much like once we left I was like does she like me like how did that go so I remember sending like a follow-up text to you just saying like oh I had like a great time and then you responded and I'm like cool she doesn't think I'm like the weirdest person yeah. ever <laughs> I think like people should do that when they meet for the first time yeah. because that like relieved a lot of stress off of me I feel like you can kind of reanalyze the entire situation where like oh my god did I talk too much did she like me was I annoying and that follow-up text be like oh no okay it was all good it's like I'm just in my head Mm -hmm. and we're gonna stay friends like they're not gonna stop talking to me because then if they don't respond then you know like you don't have to think about it anymore you don't have to like make up scenarios in your mind like you just are gonna get your answer no matter what right away too yeah I always send up follow-up (laughs) texts I just feel like it's nice (laughs) yeah it is and it just makes like it makes the person feel good you sending a text or just like vice versa if you get the text back yeah it feels good I don't even remember that That really like feels so long ago it does feel like a long time ago I feel like we've both have gone through like a lot and we've just like grown up but it's also cool because it's only been like it's still like it's only been been a couple of years but we've been able to like our friendship has progressed so much it really has and I don't know why like I just feel (laughs) I haven't like come to see you like a ton it's not we're physically like in the same like Mm -hmm. we're not together I don't live you know and I would still literally call you one of my best friends yeah same I think sending voice memos is really fun too we started doing that because we both post our entire life on social media it makes me feel like I am there with you every day that's the nice thing about social media is like you can keep up with people that you don't live near because I live in such a small town like there's not a ton of people with common interests so all of my friends almost now that I've made in the last couple of years like none of them live near me it's definitely been just like me kind of watching their lives through social media which is really cool how do you keep up with like all your friends well I don't have that many if I have the urge to reach out to them to reach out to them if I feel like I want to connect with them just to send like a quick text I'll do that and it'll make me feel good even if it's just like a quick thing or a quick voice memo quick call it makes me just feel connected to them it's also just great to engage with each other on social media as dumb as that sounds it is just nice though to know like they're still like with you maybe not physically but like you're thinking about each other or you're supporting each other yeah I definitely get in my head of oh if they haven't engaged with me on social media that much like oh maybe they're not my friend anymore (laughs) seriously somebody liking my story that I'm friends with or commenting on a post like reassures me oh we're still friends I know I feel the same way I used to feel that way in high school a lot like girls would always be like you didn't comment on my post you hate me you know like stuff like that but I feel like yeah the liking your story is so much validation so easy to Mm -hmm. like you don't have any thought it takes like half as it's like a millisecond it's my favorite actually Mm -hmm. and then I like to see like who favorited my post (laughs) I really like swiping up on people's stories just to like you know it's fun but then I don't want to like annoy people and be like we have to start a whole combo now yeah it just can be like quick since you're the one that's mainly home and not in a city with all your friends do you find it like hard to keep up with them because they're the ones that are like out and about in their life like say for me I'm living in a city and most I mean not most of my friends are around me but like socially I have more going on okay I don't want to make that sound bad no, no, no. <laughs> it's completely but true you're, you're engaging with most of your friends just like virtually mm-hmm. Do you find that draining or do you actually prefer that? At first, for the first year, because before I started meeting people through social media, I had two friends and we didn't live in the, they didn't live in Tahoe where I, where I grew up. I was very used to it being virtual and just like texting. And at first it felt super lonely and it was hard for me to kind of adjust, but I had to just remind myself those friendships are like good. Like they're Mm -hmm. not going anywhere. We're not going to like stop being friends. Like I had to find my own security in them. And I think too, I understand that like I'm choosing to live in a place where I'm not around a ton of friends so I don't feel different that like maybe you let's say are like around a lot of more people like our age I can't think about that because I don't feel like sad or anything Uh I think maybe like when I first moved back home from San Diego and I was just doing college online like seeing people's posts probably made me feel like sad and lonely over time like just hanging out with myself it's given me a lot more just like comfort and I've also been like leaning into family like there's a lot that goes into it it makes me feel good like when I see my friends having lives and like doing things like it makes me feel good because I know like oh like when I see them we can go do fun stuff too like I'm here right now and I know we're gonna do things that like you do all the time that I see you do on social media I'm taking 
taking you just with me. Yeah, and I like, like that. that. Yeah. Like, we went to Pilates tonight, and, like, I always see you post Pilates, yeah. and I'm like, fun, like, this is cool, you know? <laughs> you get to pretend to be me for a weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be Shelby. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean, like if I went to go visit you in Tahoe, like I would want to go to your your yoga studio and go on the walks that you go on and see the lake and everything. Have you ever reached out to people? Honestly, I don't think I have. I've never looked for people to reach out to on social media. It never really crossed my mind until you reached out to me. And girls have reached out to me over the years and it's really cool. I'm also really mindful that like it's just it's going to all happen organically. Yeah. So um, if there is someone that I see on social media that like I I think we would get along like of course like I would send them a message again I don't live in LA or Southern California where like a lot of these girls are so it is what it is there's a lot of girls from LA actually I will always follow someone who's like from Orange County though like and maybe like one day we would be friends or something interesting when I go to LA because I'm always the one that has to reach out because no one's coming to Tahoe yeah. so like I had to get really comfortable with that and not feel embarrassed about it when I go to LA I message people I can't feel like oh they they don't want to hang out with me like I have to be okay with like oh yeah I don't live here so like I have to be the one to reach out it's okay that like they're not reaching out to me because how are they gonna know they don't know that you're gonna be there yeah that exactly week. and so, then if you are there that week they be like oh why didn't you reach out but again like if they respond it's good yes. you're in and I like it doesn't hurt you know the yeah like, it's not like they lose? have to see you every single week after that you're not mm -hmm. from there exactly it just can be like a quick walk and then we're done and like we don't even have to text but I know like if I'm you know in LA and I want to see them like I can it can just be super low maintenance and just you know you have someone in your corner and every time you visit it is nice to like be like oh that person it is like, nice because then them. I don't feel so isolated when I'm in LA yeah especially LA because that's kind of all that's basically all I go is LA now and I'm Orange coming County. to Orange County <laughs> thanks Shelby <laughs> yes the better place <laughs> I want to hear about like going to LA for the first time. Yeah. Also tell everyone like what you do for your job. I never, we never explained well, that. I don't really, I'm in school. I'm in my master's program for holistic nutrition science. It's all Women online. In STEM. <laughs> <laughs> my job right now is and has been social media. I've taken it a lot more serious than the last year year and a half or so but I just do my social posting through there it's just been like a passion for me it's just something I love and it doesn't feel like a job ever so I'm grateful for that it's just something you're already doing so mm -hmm. documenting it as you go but of course like as I go through school and stuff I don't know how much farther I'm going to go but I definitely want to lean more into like nutrition and like healing and stuff for other people and do more like projects through that in the future but for right now it's been social media do you think you're going to do one-on-one? -on -one? I go back and forth with that a lot. I want to say yes and I want to say no. I just don't really know. Do you have a big picture of like what you could see yourself doing? I do, but I'm also like, I know things are going to change with social media and stuff. Like I'm just interested to see how the nutrition space changes because like health and wellness has like blown up in like the last year, I feel like yeah. two years. Um, but yeah, I think it would be cool to work one-on-one -on -one with people. I just don't know how or what that would look like yet. Do you ever think about getting your dietitian license? Personally, no. I am through my school's accreditation. I'm a nutritionist after yeah. my bachelor's. I just, I don't know if the dietetic route is for me, but love all of it. It's all good for peeling with food. So for sure. No, I've had really good nutrition, I mean, dietitians, and I've had a really bad one. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody's different, and everyone, like, even if you see a nutritionist, like, everyone has such different values with yes. nutrition and healing, so. So, you started coming to LA, because that's where, obviously, everyone who does social media mainly is. What was the first reason why you came? It's funny, because before I was, like, really into social media, I was like, why does everyone go to LA? Like, I don't get it. Like, people say work is there, but what does that mean? I've been to LA before, but the first time I went, like, being in the social media space was just a lot different because it was, like, it felt like more of a work trip. I was also meeting you and our mm -hmm. friend Kylie for the first time. It was a big trip for me, like, mentally, I think. It was also the first time I went to Erewhon, <laughs> which, as an outsider of someone, like, who doesn't live in Southern California or like has been in this scene it's very at least for me it was very intimidating I think also at that time like Air One was so hyped up as just being like an influencer place and I've told you but the first time I went in there was with my mom and it was so overstimulating like so much was going on I felt like I had to be perfect to be in there I had to be rich like it's just now to me it's not overwhelming fortunately like I know it's not that deep at the time it was just so like crazy so we like got our food I don't even remember what I got and I got in the car and I just started crying because I was so stressed out but it's like I had such a buildup about LA 
and I didn't know why there was just like it was this place that like was so perfect and like everybody's wealthy and perfect just rich or on social media but I feel like I've been to LA so much and I've learned so much about the place I have been here for work to do you know like events or see my manager but I've also gone to just like hang out with friends that I've met that live in LA I've stayed with them for weeks at a time and it's been cool to like just see the different neighborhoods and I never go to downtown LA I say I go to LA (laughs) but then people from home are like you go to LA and I'm like not downtown Mm -hmm. like it's so different I'm definitely just like like in Santa Monica and like West Hollywood, Venice area. Those are all the good areas. Yeah. It's interesting because like sometimes I think now I go for to LA, it's like always work because I'm always posting stuff or something. But probably last year it was just a little bit more like meeting people because mm-hmm. a lot of people that I've connected with live in LA how many of the friends I've reached out to you or how many of the people I've reached out to you actually became your friend all of them but I think that it's not every friendship has looked different and that's something that I've had to really come to terms with because I'm someone prior who like wanted everyone in my corner to be my best friend like I'm definitely quality over quantity I had that mindset coming into like making friends especially because I'm like well if we both like health and wellness like it's gonna be like you know we're besties like instantly and I've just had to learn like you have different relationships for different reasons you're just also gonna like flow with people different like your conversations are gonna be different yours and I's relationship is much different than girls I know in LA not Mm -hmm. for like better or for worse it's just different that makes sense and I and it is so important to have different friends for different things like I am so big on that Mm -hmm. because if all your friends are the exact same that's weird exactly and like it's not a bad thing to like have a friend that when I'm in LA like I go see them for a smoothie like yeah but then we don't necessarily talk we might keep up on like social media or something but we're not texting all the time and that's not a bad thing it just is having more people in your corner and people that you know like you and you like them it feels good being super close with someone and super the the level of best friend people think of where you're attached to the hip doing everything together you can't do that with everyone like Mm -hmm. you can't have that many best friends it just doesn't work like that like you don't have that much energy to give yeah I've had friendships in the past where we are attached at the hip and as fun as it is maybe in the beginning it just is not sustainable and you just like get so burnt out and I think it's like that codependency forms which at least in my instance, like is never healthy. Mm -hmm. And it just creates a lot of resentment and toxicity. And when you are starting to pull away because you're like, oh, never mind, I don't want to do this anymore. It causes a it causes like huge issues because both parties like kind of get offended exactly of, like oh why is this too much for you am I too much like am there's I not like, enough for you there's no good way to go about it if you go from like being at the hip to like slowly pulling back a bit it's going to be offensive yes like it's going to be taken the wrong way even if both people are mature and like talk about it it's still ha- you have resentment towards each other mm-hmm. of like and so many questions in your head of like why right I think especially if like both people are single and then somebody gets a boyfriend or like something like that because like at least for me I've I've always had a boyfriend for the past four years but we're long distance so it's a little bit different like when he comes home I obviously spend a lot more time with him and then like my best friend or whoever I'm or like oh why aren't you spending more time with me now because your boyfriend's here it's just like what do you expect the dynamic really changes when people get boyfriends I think for you it's different because it is long distance so it's like we're hanging out and like it's not like you're thinking about like oh I should go hang out with Max yeah like I'm not Um, gonna go see him tonight you know. right when you're like used to being with someone so much and then they get a boyfriend it's like the whole dynamic changes that happened to me so much in high school because all of my friends dated and I didn't it was really hard for me to like want to be so close with my best friends and then just have them not leave me in the dust but just their priorities change yeah because now the boyfriend's their best friend mm-hmm. that they want to do everything with. especially in high school like that's yeah way it's more very extreme. different in high school yeah. I feel like college it was just a lot of like hookup culture yeah. um some of my friends a lot of most of my friends had serious relationships but I was definitely not the priority and that's normal it's not fun what's your reality of LA now after going there so many times I definitely know it's what you make of it I think at first I thought you had to be a certain way but I think that there's a lot of just falseness that's created like I think a lot of people in LA are just trying to keep up with an image and it's not necessarily real I think there's a lot of good 
and wholesome parts about LA I would say for the majority it's definitely like not what you think it kind of feels like the movies sometimes like what's going on but it's also you don't have to be perfect like to go into Air One for example like as dumb as this sounds I know but it's just a grocery store or it's yeah. just a Pilates studio but you kind of feel like all the spotlight is on you yeah. you know but what I also realize is everyone is so worried about themselves like no one's actually paying attention to you that couldn't be more truer for LA for the people I've met it's a mix I was kind of blinded a bit just because I had assumptions that because people are in the health and wellness space it's very authentic and like good but it's also a business still and that wasn't something that I kind of like put two and two together so there's definitely people with different priorities and kind of like their angles it's just like I don't know if it's hustle culture or just trying to like schmooze I definitely think there are people what is it called like social climbers that's a thing like people definitely like if you have a following like I've seen that but then I've also seen the wholesome side and like I've met really nice people like down to earth it's very different if like you meet someone that grew up in LA versus someone that like moved there if they're specifically in social media a lot of people move to LA too to become someone so it's like you can't take offense to that if they're it sucks if they're just kind of using you to social climb but it's also a lot of people are doing it it's kind of like their network in a way but I take so much offense to it like I've had experiences with that and it feels so bad I didn't even think it was like possible because you're going in with such good intentions you don't think anybody else would be using you Yeah, like I wouldn't, like why would someone use me, you know? Like I've never had like a good perception of my social media. Like I've been very, I just don't really think about it to be honest. When you're in a place like LA or you're around people like that, it definitely becomes a topic of conversation. People ask me, well, who do you know? What are you, who are you working with? Let's do this, let's do that, let's go here. It just, it does feel transactional and it's weird because I'm like, we're in the health and wellness space. Like don't we talk about like mental health and we go get matcha? Like why is this? But people are like, they're trying to, build businesses they're trying to become influencers themselves like it's crazy I was so naive going into that whole scene but luckily I've learned a lot through it it is a career when like you're genuinely just doing it because you like it like obviously a lot of people do start it because they like it but they're trying to make money trying to get more followers and that's fair like it's people's jobs it's people's like how they pay the bills like I respect it it's just I don't know if everyone like goes about it the right way you can network I don't think social climbing is like nice it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good when you're on the end of the stick of it if Mm -hmm. that's the right saying you're not doing that to other people right like if you both were doing that sure like you're both using right if I was using people too like fine like and I've seen it like people form groups and they all just kind of do it together and it's just it's just crazy but where's the depth to those friendships I think of it sort of like your partying friends in college or high school it's like you only see them when you go out and it's so much fun and you think they're your friends but then once you stop partying or something happens it's like oh they actually weren't my friend it's very like convenient and I think in the moment you rationalize it and justify it like no like we love each other we're great friends but taking yourself out of the situation you're like oh whoa you know like your blinders are off and you like really see the situation for what it is Mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily mean bad on the person it's just like kind of what's it depends person by person it can be bad and it can hurt and it can feel so weird and it can suck I've gone through that and it's not fun but it's part of the process I think because like people always say like the people in LA are fake whatever and then if you do actually experience it you're like oh I never thought that would happen to me like you hear the saying people in, are fake in LA but then you don't know how that's gonna feel on you yeah and it's very different because, you're like no not me exactly like oh that's not gonna happen to me and again like especially because I'm in a health and wellness space like I just didn't think that was possible yeah but again I've met such nice people in LA so like not everyone is bad it's just a matter of you need to have boundaries with yourself not even just in LA but anywhere like yeah have those boundaries and like know what you want out of friendships and I think being really like when I first moved here as much as I wanted to make new friends and I went out of my way all the time I still is selective and being like who do I actually get along with I want to spend time with pursue that person versus like seeing someone who seems popular it's like oh I want to be friends with them but mm-hmm. I'm not not everybody want to be good together not everybody is supposed to click I think I don't think you should take that personally I used to oh my god if we don't get along like it's on me and it's not like people's personalities just like don't mesh all the time I think it's so important to just 
genuinely be yourself because it's going to help you filter out all the people that aren't meant for you. Yes. If you try and be someone else just to kind of keep up with someone you're trying to be friends with, like that's not sustainable. Yeah. I used to do it and it just doesn't get you anywhere. I think also with making friends, like leaning into the fact that it's going to take time, but that doesn't mean like it has to be draining or like stressful. Like you and I, like we're in such a good place now, but we've been doing this for two years like and it hasn't didn't. it hasn't felt like work or anything but I think that's also because we've had such like good mindsets yeah. the whole time and it's been a very slow friendship versus like love bombing each other exactly yeah. like we haven't been like oh my god you're my best friend you're gonna be my maid of honor I had people do that to me and that's not healthy because then that's like creating just it's like think it in your head <laughs> I know I'm like please don't tell me that please don't until you actually ask me to be in your wedding don't love bomb me and do that it's just just a mind f you know yeah you really truly in the moment are like we're gonna be friends forever and then something happens and it's like oh my god wait I couldn't like what your 20s are such a crazy time too already because you're going through so many things and everybody's going at different paces and they're at different stages so it's already like kind of a slippery slope like not everyone's going to be aligned and going the same direction yeah so I think like being flexible with that too because people might be a really close friend of yours for a while but then you might kind of grow apart rather quickly and that's fine you're not weird yeah you can be friends for a year and it had been a great friendship but like 10 years and don't prepare for that either like you, you don't want that to happen but if it does happen like don't blame yourself yeah. whatsoever because it's just a natural thing of life everybody's just going through their own stuff what's like your go-to tools for when you go through a friendship breakup I went through a friendship breakup last year and it honestly I'm not even trying to be dramatic but it was probably one of like the hardest things I've gone through just because I've had friendship breakups before. I had closure mm -hmm. about them and last year I didn't have closure. I don't know what tools got me through. I think just kind of leaning into maybe other friendships just to kind of validate myself that I'm not like weird. I think I at first went through a lot of like what's wrong with me I'm weird. It brought up a lot of insecurities from old friendships that I had. Um, so I kind of had to stop myself a lot and just kind of ask myself, but then also get validation from like my family maybe. And just like, did I do something wrong? Or am I like, should I work on something? But you cannot blame yourself like at all. Unless someone tells you you did something, that's just don't do that. <laughs> Definitely agree. I feel like every friendship breakup I'm, I'm like oh my god why does this always happen to me there has to be something wrong with me for this to consistently be happening and w when I like look at the grand scheme of things I've just made a lot of friends in my life so I'm not gonna keep them all a lot of them are gonna end in friendship breakups and I have to just be okay with that and that's the reality of your 20s and it doesn't mean there's inherently something wrong with you and like be so grateful that you did have a friendship breakup because like I've seen like it happens like at the perfect time mm -hmm. last year it happened at a perfect time and like I could just tell we were both going in completely different directions of life and it just makes sense I think in the moment it was really hard and sad for me but now I can see it like oh that makes sense or even friends you know when I was younger like I can understand it now and I can see like oh yeah I'm not glad that we aren't friends anymore but it just it makes sense and it's like healthier for both people I think all the friendship breakups I've had have made sense and happened for the best some of them I was blindsided and some of them I kind of was getting the feeling towards the end were you blindsided or did you kind of know like this was eventually going to happen no completely blindsided I think it was just a matter of like love bombing too that kind of threw me off I wasn't used to that I had just gotten close with someone like so fast and I don't think that's for me that's not healthy because I just want to like love people so hard but I think like I've really had to be patient with people I think the slow progression is better but then at the same time it's like if someone leaves you like please let them like don't force them back in because yeah. There's so many people on the planet like I've realized it's like it's so good to have boundaries and standards with your friends or just like partners like there's so many people you don't need to settle in any capacity and if someone wants to leave or they feel like they've outgrown you please let them because there is a better friend for them out there and for some reason you guys just don't work and that's 
fine so fine there's so much pressure to be with best friends with someone forever and it's like the world there's millions of people Mm -hmm. like you're gonna find someone else who fills whatever that they filled for you even friends from like high school and college there's a lot of pressure I feel like to like stay best friends forever and be in each other's weddings and have your kids grow up together and I'm just so like you don't need to do that whatsoever because that doesn't mean it's a healthy relationship just because you've known each other forever and I think like if you have one long-term friend you're good you're so good that means you're a good friend if you can keep one Mm -hmm. but you're right the time you've been together does not equate to a good relationship just because I've been dating Max for four years doesn't mean we have a great relationship Uh, we do just because you think someone's been together for a long time like someone with a less amount of time can have a healthier relationship yeah I think like history might be comforting it doesn't define it doesn't make it better and the relationship can always change it could be a it could have been really great in the beginning or really bad in the beginning and change it's so nice too to make friends now because it's like I'm just different than I was before and like people now that I meet get to know like not a new version of me but just like an evolved version of me that like I'm actually proud of and confident and like more rooted in myself prior than other friendships so I just feel like being in a good place mentally with yourself is really important too I don't know like I think at least for like romantic relationships you're only as healthy Or you only respect yourself as much as, like, your partner. It's, like, your mental health of your partner is, like, yours, too. So, if you're, if you're, like, all secure and settled in yourself, like, so will your relationship be. Right, I agree with that completely. I think that's so important. Maybe we should talk about, like, how did we maintain it? Yeah, and I guess, like, giving advice to other people. I feel like when I started to be friends with you, I was, I was valuing low-maintenance friendships because I had very high-maintenance ones at the time. It was nice that we were on the same page. I never expected you you to respond to me right away I never expected you like to come visit me and slow like the second we met you know I definitely was still like anxious and insecure like oh does she want to be my friend so anytime we did interact reaffirming or something yes reaffirmed like that we're friends and now two years however long we've been friends like I don't need that validation as much in the beginning I definitely did I Uh, agree with that because it's very it's a slippery slope it's like the more you lean into it the more you feel like it might like I just feel like being vulnerable is really scary and it's scary with a partner and it's scary with a friendship like I felt the same exact way as you like I'm gonna give her a little bit more and see if she still likes me and that's normal I'm glad we're in a good place now that like I actually feel so secure in our friendship but like again that's taken time and like reaffirming each other and it might not be like oh my god Shelby I love you so much like you're great like it might not be like verbatim an affirmation it could just be swiping up on your story like it sounds dumb but it, it's the little things that just make you feel secure in it like when you stayed over the first time and we talked on like legit talked on the couch for like two four hours every night I swear it was like four hours yeah and like we got deep or like I got really deep yeah. which is like not normal for me and the next day I remember asking you do you ever get like um you vulnerability asked, like, hangover yeah you're like you know anxiety and I was yeah. like yeah I was like I just got that from last night because I'm like oh my god did I share too much with her and like and it, I feel that when you said that I'm like oh my god like I know what she feels like because I have felt that way and I realized too like wow like we're fine you opening up to me about whatever you did it didn't slight me at all like it just made me feel more like confident about our friendship I felt really good that you felt safe enough to talk to me that made me feel amazing that's good I think too like going into it knowing like we're going to be long distance friends just having that common ground like we both know it's going to be low maintenance but that doesn't mean it's anything less it's just don't don't feel weird if like you don't respond right away it might be a couple days it might be a week and like that's just reality and I kind of like that and I still like that like we don't always respond to each other right away and that doesn't mean we don't like each other but I think communicating that is really important telling your friend that that's what you want and that's what you do because maybe they've only had super high maintenance friendships and then they're like all confused but also like we go through times of talking every single day voice memos that are like hours long but then we go through times where we don't text for weeks so it's like I feel like it's just where we are in our life how busy or not busy or the vibe we're in is how we communicate too yeah I've I feel the same and like I feel like too I've had to catch myself like not because I do tend to like mirror people Mm -hmm. so like And I noticed it with like the voice memos. I'm like, okay, she's sending voice memos. Now I'll send voice memos. Like how long is she doing it? I'll send it the same. And I've had to catch myself like, no, just do what you want, Mm -hmm. Hannah. Like you're going to communicate 
no matter what so like just do what you want I don't know just doing what works for you like truly and like being okay if like you're going through a phase in your life that like you're dealing with stuff mentally or just like with your job or school or something and like being respectful and just accept like accepting that if like you're going through it or if they're going through it and just like meeting each other where you're at what you said about not having to send voicemails if you don't want to like your friend is still going to want to be your friend even if you do something differently Mm -hmm. like you should do stuff differently like you don't have to be the same yeah you're not the same person (laughs) (laughs) it's just funny like comparing it to voice memos but like that's just what I like had to catch myself and I've had to catch myself in our relationship or even other people like I don't want to go too fast like Mm -hmm. because I've gone too fast and it blows up in my face and it's the same with a partner like if you go into it head on right away it might blow up in your face so I think not pacing yourself like do what feels right but also give each other a little space yeah you know let yourself be your own person yeah like make sure you're good in yourself because like what we were talking about if you're good mentally physically all of it that's going to be reflective on the quality of your relationship we're so mature we're so mature we're only 22 we're both the same age now you're not yeah. younger than me shelby is my only friend that's younger than me what mm-hmm. you're my youngest friend but you don't act younger <laughs> you like are good that's funny i don't do I have any younger friends yeah i do have younger friends but that's, that's like because my sorority and stuff. Right. I love older friends. <laughs> I just feel like we're on the same level with my older friends. Also with like social media, I do get like anxiety if like my friends posting all the time and they're not responding to me. But I, I obviously don't get that with you. I used no, to not feel that. In, I, I feel that with myself. Oh, I'm posting all the time. Like yeah. literally for my birthday this week, like if I watched someone's story who like posted for me and I didn't respond to their text yet, I had to go respond to their text right. because now they saw I viewed their story. Yeah, I used to feel that way years ago, but I think it was just a matter of feeling like they're still going to like you. If I'm not going to feel a type of way if like you've posted and like you didn't text me back. I just have had friends like that mm-hmm. where if I Same. if I text in a group chat, but I didn't respond to respond to their specific text to me like they'll call me out in front of everyone see and I just feel like that shows like their insecurities yeah because that used to happen so much and like it just adds so much stress and it's like for what it's not really I I'll get to it I don't deal with that anymore (laughs) but it's still like in the back of my brain sometimes Mm -hmm. that I have to manage people we're gonna end the pod or the first episode here yeah let everyone know where you're socials are where they can reach you all that stuff so on every social platform every single one even pinterest even threads all the i'm trying to keep up but they're all nourished girl with two d's i share health and wellness stuff this year i've been diving more into my mental health starting anxiety medication going to therapy all of that yeah i'm all about nourishment and just healing your body with food and movement also everything will be in the description yeah thank you i love you (laughs) i love you too and we are going to do a part two right now so it's that, gonna be good yeah this one <laughs> will be scared. really deep we'll we'll talk about it in the beginning so everyone knows but thank you for coming on and i'm so excited for this to be released thanks for having me